next guest is a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist. Pulitzer Prize winning, how about that? Uh, her work appears in papers all across America. She's also a regular essayist for Parade Magazine. A fellow Clevelander, please welcome Connie Schultz, everybody. Yeah. Connie Schultz. The Price is Right models. Uh, that was the beautiful Manuela Arbelize, and we had Amber, La Amber Lancaster. It's like having all of our daughters around. We have three daughters around their ages. How about that? Do they all dress up? All, all like that every up? day. Every single day. <laughs> the senator allows that? Yeah, he? the senator has no say. <laughs> the senator has no say. Uh, Connie is famously married to a uh, senator from Ohio, Sherrod Brown. Yes. What's that like? You're a, because you're a columnist and you have an opinion of your own. And yes, you have this thank you for saying that. Uh, yeah, and, like, you know, then you have the senator guy yeah. in the house. Well, people often ask me what it's like to be married to a senator, and I can only tell you what it's like to be married to Sherrod. And, you know, I have a lot of fun with Sherrod, so I'm not going to get into the details on that. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how that sounded. Well, uh, you know, he's a Democrat, so it won't matter. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your audience is going to forgive you, no matter what you say. That is uh, now, you right. guys met when he, you wrote a column about him when he was a... No, 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 I never interviewed him. He hates when I say this, but it's true. If I'd ever interviewed him, I would never have gone out with him. I never covered him. I had just started, I was at the Plain Dealer in Cleveland. Right, you know, right. Your hometown There's newspaper. There's a little paper called the Cleveland Plain Dealer, Largest folks. paper in the state of Ohio. Yeah, it's a little paper. It's... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had just started writing a column for him after being there for eight years, and he sent me an email, uh, totally sucking up. Oh, I thought it was about him. No, it was, I know you would think that because it's a politician, but it really wasn't. It wasn't about him at all. It was, um, I think, about my dad's lunch pail because I had written about my first column was um, that I, I come from the working class. Right, right, you. me too. Yeah. And my dad worked for CEI, Cleveland Electric. I come, in the part, I come from the part-time working class, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, you grew up in old Brooklyn, right? Yeah, yeah. And I grew up in Ashtabula, a little town east of Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. So, That's like if you're from L.A. saying you grew up in Covina. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Oh, uh, anyway. How so, you met Sherrod Brown? I, so I had written about my father's lunch pail because I, you know, I, I, want, I wish he could find it. It was when he had just left the CEI, and I wanted it because I wanted to have it next to my computer because I was the first in my family to go to college. That's a good thing. Yeah, so yeah. that's what Sherry was reading. It wasn't uh, about him. Oh, I thought that. And, when, and now, when you're, what did you tell your girlfriends? Like, oh, this senator guy, this congressman guy wrote me. Well, I've been a longtime single mom for about 10 years. He'd been a single dad for 18, and when I first got an email, I sent it to my best friend, uh, Jackie Casera, and she read it, and she sent me an email, and she says, honey, this is my horse, and he's going to win. And, really? we, and we married... Less than two was it a later? kind of email like, "Hey, let's get together. I'm a big fan here. We'll go out." No, and not at all. He just said, "Hey, baby, I'm a senator." Was it that? Was that the? Yeah. Email? <laughs> <laughs> You've never met him. Have no, you? I never. Yeah, met yeah. Him. yeah. <laughs> let me just say, your hair's a lot neater than his. Your whole, your whole thing. Is I've a seen. Lot I've totally neater. seen pictures. And stuff. Yeah. So no, he wasn't like that at all. But he compared me to a writer that I wrote nothing like. Um, Who's so that? Barbara Who's King Solver. I love her. Oh, but really? I don't really oh, like her. Yeah. Really? Well, here's what I loved Barbara about King Solver. He compared you to because he had just read a book because of his daughters. But here's what I loved about the Poisonwood Bible. No, yes. yes, we just both just read that book. You've read that? Yeah, I'm a Barbara Kingsolver fan. I am about impressed. That? That's right. But here's what he did. He signed it. You'll appreciate this, because you know how we are, our yeah. people. We don't want a lot. Of, you don't like a lot of show and flim flam. He, all he wrote was Sherrod Brown, Lorraine, Ohio. He didn't sign that he was a member of Congress. Oh. I well, knew who he was. Hey, one more election. Boom. You never know what's going to happen in the politician business. You keep hoping. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's great. Uh, I remember, I'm a really big fan of his. Thank now, you. Uh, Me too. Now, from Cleveland. I want to show you this guy. Remember this guy? This was the guy, my mom said, if you know any boy who watches the show, you can't date him. That's really? who that guy is, the ghoul. Yeah, this guy, his name was the ghoul. He, he was uh, great. Yeah, he was a late uh, movie show host in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. He hosted a late night movie show. In the early 70s. Yeah, and there was a, he was, there was a guy named Goulardi that was right before him. Right, who came out this way. Right, and he, we were about the same age. So like yes, our, we old, our older brothers and sisters watched Goulardi. We watched The Ghoul. Yes. Goulardi ended up moving out here. The Ghoul took over. Uh, and uh, he, crazy, right? Every, you would always watch The Ghoul. You remember ghoul. what he did with the frog? He would yeah. he'd do these crazy things with a stuffed frog. Now, think about this. You're a, I'm a teenage girl, and I like scary movies because my mom, but we're watching it. He would take the stuffed frog, put it in a blender. Do you remember that? Yes. With the red, and then act like he's chopping it up. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> And you loved him, didn't you? I love the ghoul. See, uh, 
I love the ghoul. You can see kind of how we turned did out the we, way we did. Is it true? How they grew up. Now, is it true we went to Kent State at the exact same time? We did, and I don't think we ever met. But you no. were a Greek guy, right? You were at a frat. I was at a fraternity. Well, the fraternities at Kent State were like, uh, there was 16 people in my fraternity. That was the most <laughs> we ever got up to. But you started it wasn't a big. It wasn't a big scene. Fall of 75, right? Yeah. 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 I heard that I, that's when I started and oh. I was editor of the Daily Kent Stater before I left so we were not crossing paths because I was a journalism no no did you cover the uh, any of the, the oh yeah every the, year the, the, the tear gas thing I got tear gas while I was at Kent State because were the, Kent State is where this the horrible shooting happened in 1970 so right. this is 75 only right. five years later but it seemed like an eternity at a, that age weren't you, you know? were you scared at all about did your mom have any concern about you going to Kent State having been a place where they had shot no kids? because like uh, it was five years ago and that when you're you know 18 years old that's when you were 13 that it's forever ago were you, you the know? first in your family to go to college uh no my older brother went to college okay he did a little better than i did. i was thrown out twice i saw i know i wasn't uh, gonna bring that up here's my you got a degree in journalism right yes. and all that stuff yeah. uh my first year at kent state i got academically dismissed what uh, happened? Never, i never went to class i partied all the time uh, uh you never went to race plays the loft, i went to race plays uh the loft, the loft all those places i studied though too no i never did that uh <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back to school, got kicked out again, academically dismissed again. What happened that time? I just partied all the time, you know. Uh, I was gonna go to class, but then I got high. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. Then I got high. Da -da -da. That was like that the whole time I was in school. I never, I never had a drink. Of, I was a never had a drink anything before I went to college. Oh, and then so you kind of... by the first month, I was like, Bleh! <laughs> <laughs> that was me all over the place. Uh, and uh, Kent State, do you remember MMS? They used to play those songs. Well, I understand we have a different memory of this. I always remember Bruce Springsteen coming on on Fridays at I was five on Friday at 5 o'clock. That's o exactly right? what happened, yeah. Out the, in, in this, oh, this is great. In the warm weather, this is college, right? This is yes. Kent State. But I remember the enrollment at Kent State was bigger than my small town population. Scared out of my mind when I first started there. Really? Yeah. But there's Bruce Springsteen, and we would put the speakers out the windows. Remember? What, yeah, what this, radio, did you this radio station would play these songs, like, uh, at 5 o'clock. They'd play three songs in a row, and every kid in the world, in, in, that, in that area, would just put their speakers in the window and yep. blare it. Yep. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, oh. So I'm sorry, we got to do this really quick, okay? Right. Now, because I'm the host of Prices, right? And you're yes, our I know. Guest, I right? Yes. Everybody in the audience has a name tag on. Yes. I have my name tag right here. Why aren't you wearing this yours? Because I had to wear mine. This is mine. I'll put it on right now. Thank you. Um, now, we have a little pricing game for you to play while you're here. You up for that? I Since am. You're on the show, we have a little pricing game. Uh, George, what are we going to play for? Well, Drew, right now, here comes the beautiful Rachel and Manuela with tonight's fabulous prize that everybody in the audience has a shot for. It's the Tassimo T47 Home Brewing System, featuring a television beverage in about a minute. Could be a less, could be a little more. Enjoy lattes, cappuccinos, and hot chocolate in the comfort of your own home with the Tassimo T47. How can a clam cram cream in a clean cream can with this fabulous brewing system? Thank you, George. Uh, you're on with the coffee maker. Uh, now, if you get this right, everybody in the audience is going to get this. Receive two varieties of tea disc coffee packages. This is two varieties so of tea disc coffee packages. Uh, everyone in the audience, you'll get one. Everyone in the audience gets it. Uh, we say that this is $150. Is the actual retail price higher or lower, lower. than $150? Lower? Are you sure? <laughs> Lo are you sure it's lower? Wait, wait, okay, wait. I have a question. Yes. So if most of the people are holding their fingers up, is that right? Your thumbs up? Then I get to blame you if I. Oh, no, you're not? <laughs> What do you think? Lower. 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 It is lower. Everybody gets a coffee maker. Thanks to Connie Schultz. We'll be right back at Joe's Jet and the Black Arts.